individually click frozen Granny Smith sliced apples, 40 pounds of them, so just over a dollar and a half a pound, which is not as good as what we do at the um, the you pick place when we get apples. However, there's no waste on these; they're already prepared and ready to go. Ha ha ha! Look at those beauties. That really is going to be full enough. Kind of flattened out the pack, sucked the extra air out so that they'll stack nice in the freezer till we're ready to use them. And there we have it. 40 pounds of peeled sliced apples, ready to use with very little work. It was getting a little bit late on June 2nd, so I decided to pull the seal off and then pull the chunks of ice out to speed up the defrost cycle. But apparently I couldn't be bothered to press the button on the microphone so I could get audio. Okay, anyway, so I just, as you saw, I just finished pulling out the ice and then tipping the rack a little bit so any water would spill off the top and on any off of any shelf. Now I'm going to get the fan going again. It should only take maybe another half hour. It's been about an hour so far. So maybe another half hour and it'll be dry enough to get the next batch. Okay. All right. It's getting late. I'm going to get this pre-cooling now and then get it loaded. So I'm going to take the paper towel underneath and along the sides make sure that I've got it all okay a little bit of moisture still underneath that's not too bad <laughs> yeah so there's some some moisture in there but not too much so I'm going to go ahead and put the plastic disc in front and get that thing closed and get it started. I'm going to be putting frozen apples in there, so of course they're already cold and frozen. I just need to get this down to about 20 degrees. It'd be nice to have it a little colder, but if it's not that cold, I'll just add a little extra time. But I want to get it going because it's 11 o'clock. Going to get it started. So start and continue. And I'll get the valve. We'll get the drain valve closed. Okay, I'll try to give that the minimum time for freezing and then get the apples on there. Uh, honestly, I'll check in 30 minutes. Uh, we're doing some apples. I'm going to sprinkle them with a little mix of the spiced apple cider mix uh, that's dry and with some cinnamon mixed into it and just a touch of nutmeg. So let's get those going. So here's what I've got. So I already have a mix of this. Uh, this is the spice apple cider mix, which we've used in apple pies and apple crisps before. Got some uh, some cinnamon. Oh, got some cinnamon. So we've got some of that mixed in here. Going to add a little bit more. Make sure we have enough. I don't know how much you'll need. It's, it's got to cover 10 pounds. So just a quick mix and then I'm going to uh, put it in this little shaker container and shake it on the apple pieces. So just make a little bit of a funnel out of a piece of parchment. So now I've got a little shaker piece on there that I can shake that onto the apples. So here's five pounds of the apples. So I've got two bags of five pounds each. I think I'm going to go with gloves for these. So the main reason I want to do this on this tray is because I don't want any of the loose powder to go. I don't want any of this loose powder to end up going into the freeze dryer. So this way I can put them on the tray and then just kind of shake them off as I move them to the tray. And I'm pretty sure it's going to make a bit of a mess. I can do I can deal with that. So when I can kind of Try to break them up a bit if I find any stuck together ones. I'm not going to worry about it too much though because we're in a hurry. All right, so I'll probably have to pop some of these on, uh, apart as I put them on the trays, but we need to get this moving along. So I'm going to try this out. Okay, so then I'm going to kind of toss them around a bit.
Now they've got a little bit on each one of them, kind of stuck to them. And then this one, oh, better. So I need to get it to uh, 1889 to have two and a half pounds. Okay, so 1891, so just slightly extra. That'll be good. So I'm gonna move these over and we'll squish them down and flatten them out afterwards. Okay, tray two. And this one needs just 1881 to make it to the two and a half pounds. And that's what should still be here. Okay, 1907. I'm gonna have to wait to write these down because my hands are just so gooey. I'll get that moved. So again, going to quickly, quickly. So let's get those on there. So on that tray, on tray three, I need 1876. Okay, 1876 on that one. And again, I'll, I'll take them back and weigh them in just a minute. And on this one, I need to get to 1884 if they're all here. So now we can get those weights real quick. Tray one, 1892. Tray two, 1907. Tray three, 1876. Tray four, 1902. So this time I'm not gonna drill them in there. So I'm just gonna put them in there. It's not as good not near as good as having them drilled in but it's something I can do very very quickly because I want to get them in the machine as quick as possible all right it's down to four degrees I'm gonna get them in there real quick and we'll get them started starting at the bottom with tray four and I'm gonna work my way up so tray three tray two and the thermometers are showing 20 degrees now so still plenty cold. Okay. So it's been pre-cooling for one hour now because it took a while to get those on the tray. I'll let it pre finish freezing. It's gonna start in the middle of the night. I'll make sure that the seal is good, and it is, uh, so that there's no chance for a vacuum problem in the middle of the night. Uh, we'll come back and check it when it's done, which will be two days. Uh, don't go away, because it'll be just seconds for you. Unless we do something else in between, because I might do an oil change in between there. I'll have to check it. I'm in the middle of an apple batch right now, but I should have cleaned the oil between the other batches. Um, however, I can do it right now while it's running because I changed the one valve out up at the top. Uh, well, I added this hose to it so I can just shut off the valve at the vacuum pump and that separates it. So I'll make sure that this is off so it's not going to go. So I can just start draining these out. Oh, I should get rid of that first. Go ahead and get that draining. And because this, uh, the valve at the top of this hose coming from the vacuum is turned off, I need to let air into here. So that's why I added this connector here. So then air can come in this way through the top of these filters housings. Yeah, so then Air can come in through here and, and through here and, and down. Next, if I'm in a hurry and these need to get emptied quickly, I can add 
air from a bike pump or compressor or a big fat straw and just push some air into that to help push the oil out faster. So as soon as that's emptied out, I'll go ahead and get those cases open and change out the filter elements. So come back as soon as that's empty. I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off. Alright, so got that out. I'll take that element of uh, the paper towel roll piece and just throw that away and not try to salvage that oil. That's how I change out the oil. Uh, I'll have that much new oil times two uh, every time I switch these. So slowly it changes out the oil. Well then, just wipe that out. And it doesn't have to be cleaned out very well, it just has to get any water blobs out of it. It doesn't matter if it's still oily, because I'm going to refill it with oil. Alright, so get this part off of there. Okay. I'll go wind the new filter stuff on this, the new filter, you know, paper towel stuff, and they'll be back. So I've got this filter piece rolled to the right size. Now I can get that back in there. Now I'll get this housing back on. I need to move this out of the way. So I can get this in there. Got to get the threads lined up correctly. All right. Now I need to finish getting this one drained and get it switched over also. We'll get that one reloaded with paper towel filter and we'll be back again. Okay, I'm back with the other one. So the whole process, uh, this entire process is probably, we'll have to check the tape, 40 minutes. Now I just need to refill it. Okay, it's right at the top of the filter material now. Starting up here, so before it gets to here, I need to put the cap on. Let's get this on. It's running, it's circulating, it's filtering. So now the oil's coming down through here, through the center, up through the outside, across here, down through the center up through the outside and out there and back to the vacuum pump. Nice and clean. Yeah, that's oil is flowing through there right now. You can see there's still some air bubbles going through. There will be for a little while as it gets all the air out of it. That was 16 batches ago, just short of a month because we're in the middle of this batch. So basically from the 4th of last month to the 3rd of this month. So once a month I have to do that. About. Depending on the water load. So let's get those checked. The apples are in the last few minutes of their initial dry. I'm going to get past that. We'll get them out and check them. The freeze dryer was in its last few minutes of the final dry cycle uh, for the apples. Going to get them out, weigh them, check them, put them back in uh, for the dry check to find out if they've stopped losing weight. 
So it had already gotten down, the tray temperature already said it's down to 90 degrees. I don't like to let them get too cool before I take them out and check them because then I'll have to worry about condensation. One thing that I've noticed with some types of things is that it is good to let them cool part way. Uh, there's a balance between taking them out too warm and waiting too long until they're cold and have to worry about condensation. Some things that are really sugary like pineapple and maybe papaya, uh, they tend to be still flexible when they're warm. I think it's because of all the sugars in them. But then as they cool, they get quite crisp if they're completely dry. Let's get the drain valve open. So starting with tray one, get the initial weight. Okay, so 921. Nine nineteen, so it could be closer to eighteen. Tray three, nine oh nine, and tray four, and that one's still nine twenty two. So anyway, I'm going to rotate them top to bottom. So pull that one. Tray take tray one back out, and put tray four in its place. Okay, so then put tray one down. And even though these two seem to be so similar, I'm still going to switch them just so I've got everything in order. So now I've got them in there, tray one through four from bottom to top. And the thermometers in those still show that they're uh, higher temperature. The top one's about 90 degrees, 100. 110 and about a hundred okay so get those in there and get them restarted more dry time check the drain valve closed continue and go and beautifully clear now after that oil change and beautifully clear and the pump will be running in just a second okay pumps on we're going to give it a little shake saw a couple of little water droplets go through but beautifully clear I just did a quick number crunch. And if I compare the previous batch of apples from the same box uh, with this batch of apples, these went into the freeze dryer weighing 45 grams more. That's probably all accounted for by the spice apple cider mix and cinnamon that I sprinkled on them, which isn't going to lose weight as it freeze dries or lose almost no weight because it was sugary so it will have a teeny bit of water, but that's most of it. The weight difference from when I checked the apples this time versus the first batch of apples is only 51 grams. So we're only talking a six gram difference at this point. Um, just two apples off the same tree can give you that kind of difference. So these might be dry already. We'll find out in a couple hours. It's a couple hours later, down to the last few minutes again. We'll get them out, check them, see if they lost any weight. If they lost weight again, we'll put them back in for a little more time. So we'll get it stopped so, using the down arrow. And I'll open the drain valve. And tray one. Nine twenty one, no change. Okay. So tray two. Nine nineteen, no change. 
Okay. Tray three. 909. So two hours later, so far, no change. That means that it hasn't lost any water, so I can use the time from two hours ago as how long it took time. So look underneath, make sure that it's not touching. It's not. And 921. Okay. We're good. We'll stop the machine with no defrost. Okay, I'll turn off the oil filter timer. Get the defrost fan in place. All right, we'll move them over, get them ready to bag. So 27.59 for the power usage. Get that reset, ready for the next one. All right, so here's the water from the green beans. So it's a little more than a gallon. The apples with the spiced apple cider mix uh, sprinkled on them and with cinnamon are dry and out. We'll get the final weights of them calculate out uh, how much per pound, find out what'll fit in the bag. These should be fit in the bag the same as the last set. They're the same apples. They just have the spiced apple cider mix sprinkled on them. So it still should be the same size bag. So let's get them weighed, check them out. So we'll get all the thermometers out and then get everything weighed. 910, tray two, and tray four. We'll add those all up, find out how much per pound. Be right back. Don't go away. All right, so I have some quart bags labeled already. So I've got what it is, the batch number, the date that it went into the freeze dryer, and then needs and a blank for the amount of water. And then I'll put how much is in here before it was dried, a half pound, three quarters of a pound, whatever. And the amount of water, if you wanted to get it back to the same kind of consistency or, or water amount. But for just snacking, you don't have to worry about that. So. Yeah, just beautiful, crisp, crunchy little apples. Uh, I'll probably bag them just slightly on the light side so I can have a couple of pieces to snack on. I mean, for keep a couple of pieces for quality assurance testing. All right, so we'll get those in the bags. The added sugary stuff does make them stick together a little bit, whereas the other batch did not but it's certainly not going to be a big problem, but uh, we'll have to kind of pop them apart to get them separated. And with the sugary coating on there, I want to get them bagged as quickly as possible so that they don't start absorb absorbing moisture. Yeah, I think that's too much for that. So that's more than a half pound. So can I get to three quarters? I do not know. I still need another gram. Oh, that's more than I need. So let's try a little one. All right, so that's three quarters of a pound. So that's what I'll try to do with the bags. They'll close. It's a decent amount. So now I've got the rest of it. Three quarters of a pound and 296 grams of water. Going for a pound and a quarter in this would be 79 grams. Okay, 79 and a quarter, that's pretty close. I'll do the same for this one and see how much is left. Okay, those both have about a pound and a quarter in, and I'll have to do um, quality assurance testing on these last pieces. So I've got the apples bagged in 10 one quart bags and two two quart bags. I've got the 300 cc oxygen absorbers I'm putting in these, and I'll put a couple of 500 oxygen absorbers in the bigger bags, because there's still a lot of air between all those apples. All right, we'll get all these in there and then get them zippered shut. So I'll just tuck one of these down the side of each one. 
go zippered shut. And I'm not trying to, I'm not worrying about pushing out any extra air on these because these apples are pretty close to the top already. So there's nothing I could really do with these bags. On the two bigger ones, I'll be able to push some out, I'm sure. The 500cc ones, then I'll reseal the top. All right, then I reseal the top and I put on it how many is left in there for the next time. And with these, I've got a little extra room that I can squeeze out the extra air out of the top. Because each one of these has a pound and a quarter in it. And now heat seal them. All right. So making sure that I've got a good flat um, top. Okay, and I'm going to do a double one for the first bag to make sure that the whole area is up to temperature and the bag is all nice and melty on the top. All right, beautiful seal. Got room for two more tries if I need it. And as soon as they're all sealed, I'll get, we'll get them in bin number four. Okay, and these bigger bags seem to be a little bit more wrinkly on top sometimes, so I really make sure to smooth them out and get that top edge. And hold that for a few seconds. Beautiful, nicely sealed. And if it's really wrinkly and just won't behave, then I hold it like this. It puts the seal a little further down, but I can hold it wrapped around the top of that sealer. And then I'll just hold it till it presses my fingers right out the side and then seals it. So by doing it that way, it gives it a, a nice seal. Like I said, it's just a little further down but it really keeps it nice and straight. Before I put them in the bin, I'm gonna add the gross weight of each bag. So if there's ever an issue with a seal leaking or anything else, I'll know. So this one's 72 grams total weight. I'll just write it on the bottom corner. And then I've got that for a future reference. I'm sure it would be considered more than necessary going too far but I did have that one set of bags that I bought when I was desperate for bags and I bought bad bags and two years later up to four percent of the weight had been added right through the bags. So we'll get this uh, we'll move over to the bins and get them put in there as soon as I finish this. So here's the uh, green beans from last time with the oxygen sucked out of there, so they're 21% smaller approximately. Now we'll add the apples in there. Trying to make them as level as possible to get ready for the next batches. All right, so that one's done. It's in there, moving on. The apples are all tucked away now in bin four with the other things, including the green beans from the last batch.